Hi, I'm Rob Salerno. I'm reporting for Daily Extra, and I'm here with Graham Reed, the director of the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Program at the Human Rights Watch. Uh, Graham, we're going to be talking about uh, international uh, gay rights right now. And uh, you lived in South Africa, so you have uh, sort of a, a strong background on the continent. Um, there like, seems to be a huge backlash in certain countries uh, in Africa right now against LGBT rights, uh, particularly in Uganda, in Nigeria. Um, that uh, anti-gay bill was uh, just signed into law in Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is going on on the ground there? Is this uh, a, a backlash against uh, gay rights? Is this, are politicians playing to the domestic audience here or is it you know, thumbing their nose at the, at the West at, uh, mm -hmm. at uh, critics internationally. What's what's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that I've spent a lot of time in South Africa, and I think let's start there and then talk a little bit about what's happening in the rest of the region. In fact, I grew up in South Africa, and I grew up through the period of apartheid as well as through the transformation period that included LGBT rights within the Constitution. In fact, South Africa became the first country in the world to include explicit protection on the basis of sexual orientation in its constitution. And there's a very interesting history there because it was about seeing LGBT rights as part of a broader human rights struggle, as part of the anti-apartheid movement, and as part of a new society free of prejudice and discrimination. And you're right is that we see um, recently in Uganda and in Nigeria in particular, but not limited to those places, what appears to be a pushback and a backlash and a pattern. I think in order to understand that, we need to look at the growth of an LGBT movement throughout Sub-Saharan Africa in the last 25 years, I would say. There were uh, groups in Namibia, in Zimbabwe for a long time, but recently we've seen the emergence of very vocal, very strong groups throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and you're right, is there some, is a, a backlash against that, a reaction against the gains that have been made and the small achievements and increased visibility of LGBT groups in various parts of, of Africa. Um, so what can we be doing about that here in Canada, in the US? Uh, what, what can we actually do to help the situation over there? You know, these two laws that you mentioned, the one in uh, Nigeria and the one in Uganda, are very extreme, more so than other laws that exist. There are laws that have punishments up to and including the death penalty for sodomy, but those laws refer to specific sexual practices. These laws go much further by criminalizing identity, basically, because under the guise of making it illegal to promote homosexuality. They make it illegal for any LGBT groups to do their work in Nigeria or in Uganda. They also make it illegal on paper, if the letter of the law is to be uh, followed, for any human rights organizations to be advocating for the rights of LGBT people. So in that sense, these laws are extremely draconian and it makes it very difficult for local groups to be working. Certainly in Uganda, the coalition there has sent out quite detailed guidelines for how local partners, regional partners, and international partners can work productively and creatively with them. And, um, you know, I would say that supporting, continuing to support international organizations that are working on this issue, and where possible, domestic organizations within Sub-Saharan Africa who are taking up um, the issues uh, that are facing Nigerians and Ugandans at this time. Um, well, Norway and the Netherlands, they uh, have uh, publicly cut off their aid to Uganda in reaction to, uh, to this bill. Um, is that the way to go? No one is saying that development aid should be cut off as a punishment to Uganda. What people are saying is the laws require a review of certain forms of development aid because the laws make work either illegal 
or it can compromise donors to the extent that they themselves would be implicated in human rights abuses because of these laws. So as a result, donors out of necessity, prompted by these laws, need to review their programs. Let me give you an example. A lot of aid money in Uganda goes for health. Now how do you, especially around HIV and AIDS programs, specifically targeting men who have sex with men as a vulnerable population, when that community is criminalized, when they are illegal, how do they then access health care? It's very well documented that these kinds of discriminatory laws inhibit access to health care. So for a donor supporting HIV and AIDS work, they now are, need to review their strategies and their approaches, not because they want to punish Uganda, but because the Ugandan law necessitates them re-looking at their programs to make sure that they can firstly do their work and secondly that they are not themselves implicated in the kinds of human rights abuses that are occurring in Uganda as a result of the, war, of the law. So it makes the work much more complicated and requires a more nuanced approach. Um, in terms of optics, I mean, does it, uh, does it appear to the people, uh, to people in Uganda that we are elevating LGBT rights above other types of human rights that may have been in violation in, in some of these countries uh, previous to this issue arriving on the radar, or, or even, you know, quite frankly, to elevate LGBT rights over um, poverty alleviation and, and uh, these health programs that are doing very important work in all of these countries. Mm -hmm. is, is that a problem mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. uh, for, for donors going forward, mm -hmm. and how do you navigate mm -hmm. around that? Mm -hmm. It's certainly a problem of perception, but let me just restate that no one is suggesting that Ugandans mm -hmm. should be punished as a result of this law. It's the law that's out of necessity bringing in a review of certain programs. Right, but if the result of that is that, well, then this program has to be cancelled or this ha the program has mm -hmm. to be cut back, um, does the optics on the ground turn it into, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, uh, LGBT people are keeping mm -hmm. us from this this aid money this this health mm -hmm. program uh this school mm -hmm. program any mm -hmm. of this stuff is mm -hmm. that is is that an issue is that how people read it on the ground mm -hmm. look i think you raise a very important question i mean there's a very easy solution to it is that the law needs to be repealed because the law attacks fundamental and basic human rights and i think that's what's at stake here and museveni knows that and so does Good Luck Jonathan. They know that this is an issue that's popular in Uganda. The, U the law in Uganda has a lot of support. The law in Nigeria has a lot of support. So it's not as if Western groups or organizations are supporting a population that is against this law and that's been imposed on them. No, what, the, uh, what groups are standing up for, both uh, uh, you know, all over the world is to stand up for basic human rights and these laws clearly contradict that. But the LGBT issue is always a convenient political tool for exactly the reasons that you outline. It's a vulnerable community, it's not a particularly popular community and so it can be used for the political ends of unscrupulous leaders such as Museveni and such as Jonathan who are willing to sacrifice the rights of a minority in order to boost their political popularity in the meantime. You know, some people say that, uh, you know, th these laws are the result of work of U.S. evangelical organizations in these countries, um, and yet, you know, uh, these laws are also very popular mm -hmm. with the, people, with the mm -hmm. people in these countries. Mm -hmm. So how do you... Um, how do we as a, as, a, as a movement, how do you as, a, as an organization um, fight back against something when it's so popular on the ground, um, even if it's doing these mm -hmm. detrimental things to the country as a whole? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Human Rights Watch stands for basic human rights as defined in international human rights law. And clearly these laws contradict that. These laws also contradict Uganda's own constitution as does the law in Nigeria, clearly contradict the fundamental principles of Nigeria's constitution. 
So, um, you know, and as you point out, there are some external influences, such as the role of the U.S. evangelical churches, which I think should not be underestimated. But at the same time, as you also pointed out, is that this takes place in the context of wide-scale human rights abuses. Um, we've seen a clampdown on the freedom of speech in uh, Uganda, clampdown on media, stifling of political opposition voices, the restriction of civil society organizations. We saw the passage of the anti-pornography bill that led to an upswing of violence against women who were seen not to be dressed appropriately. So it's again a vaguely defined law that prescribes what women should or shouldn't wear under the ambit of anti-pornography. So we see violence against women and you know, we see a potential witch hunt also against the LGBT community. Why is the situation in Africa getting so much attention right now? It's not like you know, prior to this law that um, you know, there wasn't a crisis or there wasn't a, a, a difficulty for LGBT people in a lot of countries in Africa. It's getting attention because these laws are a game changer. They are so extreme and also because they really do attack fundamental rights of association, of expression. And actually the renewed international attention to LGBT issues first happened around Russia. And that was appropriate because it's a similar law, right? It's the less um, severe in its punishments. And in the definition, it's an administrative offense, not a, a criminal offense. But nevertheless, underlying that is the same principle. The idea of propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations. So this idea of propaganda, or in Nigeria and Uganda, promotion, it, it, it requires an international attention precisely because it goes much further than the other laws, however, um, and unreasonable the previous laws were, this goes much further.